Good day. It's uh, good to be back again. Trying another video. Um, one of my viewers uh, contacted me and said that uh, the video I made on uh, on fitting a flint to a gun lock um, was uh, was not as good as it could have been. Um, so I've decided to do an update on that one. I'm not quite sure what happened to that one whilst it was in YouTube. Um, I thought it was fine when I posted it. But anyway, uh, I'm going to do another one. Um, let's hope this one turns out a little better. Um, I've got two guns here. I've got my fusel. 0.62 caliber fusel and uh, my 0.70 caliber pistol. Um, and I'll show you both close up as I go. Um, I decided to, to fit a, a smaller flint to this lock. Uh, I'm not entirely happy with the way it's working. It is working fine, I guess. Um, but I want to see if I can improve on it. Um, so I'm going to I'm going to fit a smaller flint. I've got three different sizes here, and a fourth size in here. Um, I fancy this one in here may be off uh, an original, or meant for an original brown bess, um, which is considerably larger than is normally used on this gun. Um, so I'm going to take this one out and I'm going to fit one of the others. I won't, I won't mess around with these too much. I'll just fit the one just to show you um, how to fit the flint correctly and, and, uh, and adjust it. Um, and I'll sh I won't touch the one on here but I will show you the original uh, this is uh, an original, or I believe it to be an original flint, um, and this is um, an original 18th century um, antique flintlock pistol. Um, so you'll be able to see exactly where the setting is on this one. Uh, this is a copy, um, a reproduction, but this is an original one. Um, so yeah, I thought it might be useful for you to see exactly, um, you know, how the flint lies in in uh, in retrospect to the to the to the actual steel. Um, okay, we'll begin. I'll okay, pull this one back to half cock. Close the pan with the steel. If you can see that a bit closer, you can probably see better than I can because I'm I'm on the wrong end of the camera. Um, hopefully this shows you the flint. And if I can hold it there, it's a strong spring on this one. You can see where the flint is about to strike the steel. How far? It's about two-thirds way up on the steel. Okay, so that's that's about where we want to aim for when we're fitting a flint. Okay. Let's have a go at this one. Now when working on a lock, changing a flint, adjusting it, um, or even napping it at the flint um, on the lock, um, do make sure that 
the gun is unloaded okay because this process could cause a spark and the last thing you want is uh, is for the gun to go off um, in the house or anywhere for that matter so um, we'll start off by when I know this one is I know this is unloaded um, if you have to do it with a loaded gun in the field um, I suggest you put a, a vent quill into the vent and um, block it up so that the sparks can't get through to the uh, to the main charge in the barrel okay um, first of all we'll undo the undo the uh, clamp on the cock with my turn screw okay and we'll take out the old flint oh yeah it's considerably bigger than the other flints I've got here okay let's see how we go putting in a smaller flint we want it to be fairly central um, I'm going to try and do this a little bit more I think this might be as far back as this one's going to go okay okay we'll close the Close the steel over the pan. And then we pull the trigger and we lower it down. Yeah, yeah, that's a little bit more. It's a bit more than two thirds of the way up. So I'm going to back off move the steel out of the way undo it turn it around because you can see you can higher or lower the flint by simply turning it around okay we'll put it in this way this time we'll see how that goes okay it's only loose close that down now that's better that's better okay now now it's up against the steel I can adjust that a little bit and it needs to come over this way a little bit so it can central lies on the steel so it's hitting about the center of the steel and if I hold that steel there tight that flint will virtually adjust itself up against the steel okay it can't be wonky because it's been pushed up against that steel by the spring by the main spring okay so all I have to do now is put my turn screw in there. I know it looks fiddly. I'm doing this left-handed. For the camera. Okay, I don't want to make it slip too much because it would damage the screw. Alright, let's swap over now. finish it off there we go okay yep flint is is positioned so it's 
central on the pan if you go straight down from the flint to the pan it's dead center on the pan okay pull it back to half cock close it that's good that's good it's just where I want it on the steel that's fine okay um, if you ever have to uh, to nap the flint if it's blunt you uh, you can do it by lowering the lowering the flint down again I'm going left-handed here okay and use the steel down the edge until it until this edge here meets the edge of the flint okay and you can use that to push against the flint and that will nap the flint it'll push off it'll break off any high points that you've got left on there and make it level but again as I said just make sure that this is unloaded okay um, just in case it causes any sparks okay I think that's uh, that's about all there is to show you really um, it's a fairly simple matter of doing it um, it, uh, it guarantees that the flint is a good fit against the steel and uh, that's what you're after it's a good fit against the steel and it's in the right position on the steel it's about two-thirds of the way up okay um, for anybody who's interested this uh, this pouch is for uh, the pins that hold the barrel in and uh, bits and pieces um, I find when I'm in the field if I'm doing it putting stuff down like small pins um, that hold the barrel in the, that I would get lost in the leaves of the forest or something or other so I, I pop them in this bag it's with me all the time it's on the gun all the time and um, I can't lose them okay I think that's about all there is to show you